ever find yourself, you know, well, kind of blown away by how our brains with all those billions of neurons actually create something as complex as consciousness? Like, it's a question that's boggled. What? Philosophers, scientists, everyone for centuries, right? And today, well, we're diving into a totally fresh take on this whole mystery. And you might be surprised to hear it's a question with some seriously ancient roots. Oh, do tell. Well, what's really wild is how this cutting-edge scientific theory, assembly theory, seemed to echo almost like a mirror, principles we find in ancient Taoist alchemy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. okay, so we're talking like the really, really old meeting the super new here. But I gotta ask, assembly theory sounds a bit uh, intimidating <laughs> for those of us who, you know, haven't cracked open a physics textbook lately. Right, right. But honestly, at its core, it's kind of like building with Legos, you know? Okay, now you're speaking my language. Imagine consciousness itself coming together from the specific ways these, it's called the mental Legos, connect and combine. Each link up, each arrangement, it's like it, it adds a layer of complexity, right? Building towards something way bigger than just the individual pieces. Okay, I think I'm getting that, but where does um, Taoist alchemy fit into this whole picture? We've gone from a science lab to like a out and taught monastery in record time. You'd be seriously surprised. Taoism, you see, with its whole focus on natural order, the flow of energy, it actually gives us this surprisingly useful framework for understanding this whole assembly theory thing. And it all starts with this idea of the void. Ah, uh, yes, the void. But we're not talking about, like, empty space here, are we? It's more like this wellspring of pure potential, right? Just bursting with possibilities. You got it. Think of a blank canvas. It's not empty. Not really. It's just, you know, it's pregnant with the potential for, like, a masterpiece. And this idea, it clicks with what we see in neuroscience, too, especially with the brain's default mode network, the DMN. Right, the DMN. That's like the brain's idle mode, isn't it? Not exactly processing info, but definitely not off. Kind of like that quiet hum in the background, yeah. Exactly. And just like that Taoist void, the DMN, it's all about potentiality. Yeah. It's that fertile ground where thoughts, perceptions, maybe even consciousness itself can actually sprout up. So both the void and the DMN, they're like that silent pause right before the music starts, you know, that moment of anticipation before, boom, creation kicks in. But how do we actually go from this, like, potential energy to, well, the world of experiences? Well, in Taoism, that shift is all about the singularity, that very first impulse of creation that pops up from the void, like that initial spark, you know, the one that sets this whole grand process of assembly into motion. Hmm. So if we're thinking about our brains now, would that be like, say, that very first sensory input we get, like that first flicker of light hitting our eyes or, I don't know, the feeling of the sun on your skin, <laughs> those initial sparks of, hey, I'm aware. Bingo. Mm -hmm. That moment when our senses are activated, when we first become aware of the world outside, that's the singularity in action. It's the thing that sets off the whole symphony of consciousness. Okay, wow. I'm already looking at even the simplest things way differently now. But let's keep going. We've gone from the void to that initial spark. But... How do we go from a single point to, well, the entire universe and, you know, our own minds and all their complexity? That, my friend, is where the beauty of duality comes in. In Taoism, you see, it's all about yin and yang, these seemingly opposite forces that are, get this, essential for existence itself. It's like that classic symbol, right? Light and dark, hot and cold, always mixing it up, always finding that balance. And hey, we see this duality everywhere, even inside our own heads. Exactly. Think about your brain's two hemispheres. You've got your left brain, often linked to logic and language. Then there's your right brain, all about creativity and intuition. They're distinct, sure, but they work as a team, just like yin and yang. Like there's a perfectly choreographed dance going on in our skulls 24-7. And that dance, that back and forth, it's crucial. Just like that balance of yin and yang is everything in Taoist thought, the way our brain hemispheres work together, well, that lets us experience the world in all its messy glory. Okay, that makes sense, but it also makes me wonder, we've gone from the singularity to this duality thing, this beautiful balance. Is there like another level to all of this, more to unpack? You bet there is. This is where things get even more interesting in Taoism, with the concept of the triad. Ooh, the triad. Now you're speaking my language. What mysteries are hidden in this one? Lay it on me. <laughs> All right, so the triad is often seen as heaven, earth, and humanity. Mm. But not like separate things, more like intertwined layers that give birth to the universe as we know it. And just like with that duality idea, there's a fascinating parallel in the way our brains are actually structured. Wait, really? Our brains have a triad too. Okay, you're going to have to break this one down for me. Of course, of course. Picture this, the brain's three spatial planes. 
you've got the sagittal, coronal, and transverse. Each one, it gives you a totally unique view of how the brain's organized, just like the Taoist triad gives you different lenses to see reality through. So instead of some slat two-dimensional picture, we're talking about a fuller three-dimensional kind of understanding. Now you're getting it. And this understanding, this whole multidimensionality thing, it's key as we dig deeper into the parallels between assembly theory and Taoist alchemy. Wow, my mind is already doing backflips. But don't worry, listeners, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We've got so much more to unpack in this deep dive into, well, the place where ancient wisdom meets cutting-edge science. Hold on tight. So we've been on this really fascinating track looking at that Taoist triad and those three spatial planes of the brain. It really makes you appreciate the whole like multi-dimensional thing going on in both systems, right? Totally. It's like we're looking at the world and ourselves in it with a whole new depth. But, you know, with all this talk about layers and dimensions, it makes you wonder, how do these systems actually explain change? You know, the fact that life is always in flux, always moving. Now, there's a question that's kept Taoist thinkers busy for, well, ages. And trust me, they've got some seriously interesting answers. Think about the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. Now, in Taoist cosmology, these aren't just points on a map. You know, they're like these fundamental forces, the ones that bring order and structure to the whole shebang. Right. Okay, I can kind of see that in a general way, but how does this actually work with our brains? Like, our neural pathways aren't exactly laid out like some ancient map, right? Not literally, no. But think about how amazingly adaptable your brain actually is. Every single experience you have, every little piece of info you come across, it physically changes your brain, literally. It's always rewiring itself, making new connections, strengthening the ones it already has. That's neuroplasticity doing its thing. Ah, okay, so it's not about fixed points on a map then. Those cardinal directions in the brain, they're more like our neural pathways, constantly shifting, changing, being reshaped by whatever we do, whatever we encounter. Now you're cooking. It's not about being like rigid and fixed, but about having this framework where incredible flexibility and change can happen. And that, my friend, brings us to another one of those cool parallels the five elements in Taoism, and what we call the sensory motor feedback loop happening in our brains all the time. All right, you're talking about wood, fire, earth, metal, water, right? the classics. Honestly, I mostly associate those with ancient wisdom, maybe a kung fu movie or two. Yeah. How do those tie into the way our brains work? It's not so much about the elements themselves, but what they actually represent. Think dynamic processes always interacting, always in flux. Wood feeds fire, fire creates earth, and on and on, right? Yeah. This beautiful cycle of, you know, interdependence, things changing and transforming each other. And our brains, they kind of do a similar thing. You bet. Think about how you experience, well, anything, really. You're hit with all this sensory input, the sights, the sounds, smells, textures, the whole nine yards. And your brain, it takes all that raw data and processes it then send signals back out to your body, telling it what to do. So like, let's say I see a plate of, I don't know, the most delicious looking food ever. That's the sensory input. Then my brain, it's like, whoa, that's amazing. That's the processing. And then my hand reaches out for a fork, the motor output. Gee, you've got it. It's this constant back and forth, a feedback loop. Sensory info goes in, motor response comes out, and it's always refining itself based on the new information it gets. Man, that makes you appreciate the simplest things in a whole new way. Even just picking up a glass of water, it's like this <laughs> intricate dance between my brain, my senses, my muscles. <laughs> Wild. Exactly. And this interplay, it's not just happening with our physical actions either. Remember how those five elements are always mixing it up, influencing each other? Well, our sensory and motor systems, they're deeply connected to our emotions, our memories, even our thoughts. Whoa, you're blowing my mind here. It makes me think about how, like, just being out in nature can totally change my mood or how a certain smell can bring back a crazy, vivid memory. It is all connected. A hundred percent. And you know what? As we keep going deeper into this whole interconnectedness thing, we find even more crazy parallels, especially when we look at how these systems, assembly theory and Taoism, understand those higher order functions that make us well, human. Okay, now we're getting to the good stuff. Consciousness, making decisions, creativity, all the fun stuff. So what does Taoism have to say about these parts of ourselves? Well, in Taoist alchemy, they've got this idea of extraordinary organs. Basically, certain organs, and the brain's a big one here, are thought to regulate these subtle energies and govern those higher functions you were just talking about. And I'm guessing this lines up with like our, our modern understanding of how the brain handles more complex things. You know it. Think about the midbrain, the prefrontal cortex, those areas. They're key for stuff like planning, 
abstract thought, keeping our emotions in check, basically, the brain's executive team. So both of these systems, they get that there's a hierarchy within the system itself. But it's not just about separate parts doing their own thing, right? It's how it all comes together. Now you're really hitting the nail on the head. And this brings us to, and get this, a fascinating link between the Big Dipper, as seen through that Taoist lens, and this idea popping up in neuroscience called plasmatic consciousness. Whoa, okay, that's a combo I was not expecting. A constellation and a scientific concept. Tell me more, you've got my attention. So in Taoism, the Big Dipper isn't just a random bunch of stars, right? It's like this celestial signpost guiding cosmic energy, influencing all sorts of metaphysical stuff. It hints at this order, this intelligence, that's bigger than what we usually see and understand. Okay, I'm hooked. How does this tie into plasmatic consciousness, though? Is my brain secretly navigating by starlight or something? Not quite. But the connection is in this idea of, like, a guiding principle that runs through the entire system. Plasmatic consciousness, it suggests that consciousness isn't stuck in one specific spot in your brain. It's more like this fluid intelligence that's everywhere in the neural network. So instead of one conductor leading the orchestra, it's more like the music itself is coming from all the instruments playing together in sync. Beautifully put. And... Honestly, it highlights how much we still don't know about consciousness. But both assembly theory and Taoist alchemy, they give us some intriguing clues. It's like we're putting together a giant cosmic jigsaw puzzle. And while we might not have the whole picture yet, every new connection gets us closer to seeing what's really going on. And the pieces just keep getting more and more interesting. We've only just scratched the surface of how these two systems, one ancient and one totally modern, can shed light on the mysteries of, well, us and the universe we call home. Well, listeners, buckle up. We're about to dive even deeper, exploring even more wild connections as we keep going with this deep dive into the unexpected parallels between assembly theory and Taoist alchemy. You won't want to miss this. And we're back. Man, we've been on quite the ride, haven't we? Exploring how this assembly theory and Taoist alchemy they seem to be saying similar things about consciousness, even though they come from totally different worlds. Yeah, and those uh, echoes, they get even more mind-blowing when we look at how both systems view those, <laughs> those opposing forces, right? That push and pull that we've been circling around this whole time. Right, we talked about yin and yang, those fundamental opposites that are always like in this dance together. But something tells me we're about to go even deeper down that rabbit hole, huh? You got it. In Taoism, that whole interplay of yin and yang it's beautifully laid out in something called the Bagua, these uh, eight trigrams. Each one is a unique combo of yin and yang, kind of like a cosmic dance of change and transformation. Okay, I can kind of picture that, like how energy flows in the universe, but mm -hmm. how does that translate to something as complex as, well, our brains? Think about those intricate neural pathways in your head, right? Mm. Constantly firing off signals, sending info all over the place. But those pathways, they're not static. They're mm -hmm. always changing, always in flux, circuits switching on and off, depending on what we're experiencing, thinking, feeling, everything. So our brains are more like this fluid, ever-changing energy field rather than some fixed structure that... You got it. And just like the Bagua, with its delicate balance, our brains, they're constantly searching for that equilibrium between getting fired up and chilling out between different areas, between what's going on in here and out there. Like our brains are these master conductors, making sure all the different instruments in the orchestra are playing in tune, right? Too much of one thing and the whole symphony goes haywire. Love that analogy. And it really drives home the point that this balancing act, it's happening 24 seven, mostly without us even realizing it. And here's the amazing part. This crazy complexity that all comes from these simple interactions of yin and yang, those basic building blocks we keep coming back to. So from that simple duality, this whole rich tapestry of experience comes to life, makes you appreciate the elegance of it all, how it all comes together. Absolutely. And as we've seen, both assembly theory and Taoist thought, they put so much emphasis on that interconnectedness. But let's, let, let's zoom in on another fascinating aspect, the multidimensional nature of both of these systems. In Taoism, we've got the low shoe square, which is often linked to this idea of cosmic harmony. Okay, hold on. A square representing multidimensionality. You're gonna have to walk me through that one. It's all about how the numbers in the low shoe square are arranged, how they, uh, how they interact, right? It shows us how these seemingly different energies can not only coexist, but actually make each other stronger. And when we look at our brains, we see that same ability to weave together all these different dimensions. You mean how our brains are taking in info from our senses, our emotions, our thoughts, all at the same time? Precisely. Think about something as simple as, I don't know, having dinner with a friend. 
You're not just tasting the food, Perfect. right? You're taking in the aromas, the textures, the conversation, all the emotions of that moment. It's all woven together into this one unified experience. It's like our brains are these like master chefs taking all these different ingredients and somehow blending them into this amazing multi-sensory experience. Now you're getting it. <laughs> and just like the Lushu square represents this multi-dimensional harmony on a cosmic scale, mm -hmm. our brains, they're always trying to find that balance and coherence, even with all the craziness going on in there. This is making me realize how incredible our brains really are. But I have a feeling we're not done yet, are we? We've talked about balance, complexity, interconnectedness. What else is there? You're right, there's more. Both assembly theory and Taoist thought, they get this, this cyclical nature of, well, pretty much everything. And in Taoism, this brings us to the heavenly stems. They represent those cycles of time, of energy, of change, that are fundamental to how the universe works. We're talking about cycles, like what, the seasons changing, day and night, the tides coming in and out, that kind of thing. Exactly. And those cycles, they don't just govern the natural world. They're deeply rooted in our brains, too. Think about your circadian rhythm, for example. Oh, right. Our internal clock, the one that tells us when to sleep, when to eat. It's running on a cycle, just like the sun rising and setting. Exactly. And it's not just sleep, right? Mm. Our brains are full of these rhythms. Mm. Our brainwave patterns, our hormones, even our thought patterns seem to follow certain cycles. We are, in a very real sense, rhythmic beings. So it's not just about knowing how our brains are put together, but about understanding those rhythms, those cycles that are built into us on a fundamental level. Now you're seeing the bigger picture. And just like the heavenly stems guide the flow of energy in the cosmos, our brains rely on those cyclical processes to keep things balanced to help us adapt to change, to keep that symphony of consciousness going. You know, this makes me think about those times when I feel off or stuck in a rut. Maybe it's not about trying to fix something that's broken, but about understanding and working with those natural rhythms that are already there inside of me. That's a powerful shift in perspective. Both assembly theory and Taoist alchemy, they remind us that we are a part of something much, much bigger than ourselves. Something that's been around for a long, long time. It's humbling, isn't it? But also kind of awe-inspiring. We've covered so much ground today, started with these basic building blocks of assembly theory, and somehow we ended up exploring the depths of Taoist cosmology. What a journey. It really has been. And what gets me, what I find most fascinating, is that both of these systems, even though they come from totally different places, they both point to the same basic truth. We're all part of this unbelievably interconnected web of life, and understanding those connections, that's the key to unlocking our true potential. It's like we've all got this incredible blueprint inside of us, this ancient wisdom just waiting to be rediscovered. And the most exciting part, we're only just getting started. Who knows what else is out there waiting to be found? Exactly. As we keep exploring, keep making those connections between ancient wisdom and modern science, who knows what incredible insights are just around the corner. Couldn't have said it better myself. So until next time, keep exploring, keep asking those big questions, and never lose that sense of wonder about this incredible universe we get to call home.